Okay, try figuring out the formal charge for each of the atoms in this molecule, and then try and figure out the overall charge for the molecule itself. Pause the video, work on it yourself, and then, uh, then press play and see how you did. Okay, hopefully you've tried to work on this yourself. Let's look at each of the atoms in this molecule, try and figure out their formal charge, and then we'll see what everything looks like. So starting off, let's start with the hydrogen here. The hydrogen is going to have, let's see, the number of bonding electrons in our hydrogen is equal to, well, just two, right? Because we've got a bond between hydrogen and carbon. Uh, there's two bonding electrons. There is no non-bonding electrons, right? So because we only have uh, one, the 1s orbital, it's the only orbital which is available for hydrogen. So you fill up the 1s, two electrons, and it's got a full valence shell. So it's, uh, that's, that's really all there is to hydrogen. No lone pairs whatsoever, so there's zero. Let's plug these numbers into our equation for formal charge. So for neutral hydrogen, for free neutral hydrogen, we've got how many valence electrons? Well, we just have one, right? So hydrogen is only really supposed to have one valence electron um, in a neutral state, in a neutral state, and it's balanced by the one proton. Okay. And the number of bonding electrons we have here is two. So um, now in this equation, we're gonna say two times one half. So that's actually gonna be one here. So one minus one. No, no non-bonding electrons, so it's going to give us an answer of 1 minus 1, or in other words, 0. And uh, I think that you'll see if you look at each of the other hydrogen atoms in this case, each of your other hydrogen atoms also have charges of 0. So you can do the exact same calculation for each of these, these hydrogens. They're all neutral. Okay, let's look at the carbon. Okay, let's have a look at the carbon here. So the carbon... We can just reuse a lot of these things here. All right, so the number of bonding electrons in the carbon, well, we have four bonds, right? And each of these bonds has two electrons. So there should be a total of eight bonding electrons. Okay, so I'm going to actually take these things out. So eight bonding electrons. There's no lone pairs around the carbon, so it's, uh, there's zero non-bonding electrons. And if we figure out the formal charge for this, we've got um, number of valence electrons in a free neutral atom of carbon. Well, that should be four, right? Four, it sits in group four. One half times the number of bonding electrons, that's one half times eight. That gives us an answer of four. And there's just no non-bonding electrons. Okay, so four minus four minus zero, well, that's zero. Okay, so it's also neutral. And um, let's see here, so same thing. Um, so one little quick shortcut is instead of figuring out half the number of bonding electrons, you can also substitute in just the number of bonds. Um, and that will actually give you the same answer. So in this previous example, instead of saying eight times one half, we could have just said four, and that would have given us the same answer. And we can, let's apply this for this carbon here. So um, if we just cut straight to the formula here, we've got four bonds, so we can actually put four in this number. Um, there's no non-bonding electrons, zero, and of course carbon being carbon has four non-bonding electrons. Uh, uh, sorry, four valence electrons in a free neutral atom, I should say. So four minus four gives us a charge also of zero. Okay, so the, all everything so far has been pretty dull, right? It's, just, it's all neutral. Um, now we're gonna get into some little bit more interesting territory here. So let's look at the nitrogen. Nitrogen again has one, two, three, four bonds attached to it. So again, if we want to take the shortcut here, we can say, we can say, do it two ways. You can say uh, eight bonding electrons times one half gives us four, or you can just say um, that you've got four bonds around the nitrogen. Either, either way, you'll get to the same answer. There's also no non-bonding electrons around the nitrogen, so that's zero. And in neutral, uh, free neutral nitrogen, there is five valence electrons around nitrogen. So five minus four minus zero gives us an answer of plus one, okay, plus one. And finally, we get to 
of the oxygen. So oxygen was going to be, um, we've got two bonding electrons, so two times one half, this gives you one, again, you could take the shortcut, just count the number of bonds, it's the same answer. Uh, Non-bonding electrons, we've got two, four, six, so six. And the number of valence electrons in free neutral oxygen is six. So six minus one minus six gives you an answer of minus one. Okay, minus one. So the formal charge on nitrogen is plus one, the formal charge on oxygen is, is minus one. So for the overall molecule, okay, for the overall molecule, everything here is zero, so we, we can just kind of ignore that. Um, we just have to add together our formal charges, plus one on the nitrogen, minus one on the oxygen, it gives us a total of zero. So the formal charge for this molecule is zero. Um, the, I shouldn't say the formal charge, you just say the charge of the molecule, the overall charge of the molecule. So it is actually a neutral molecule, um, but it does have charges. So like I said the nitrogen has a charge of plus one and the oxygen has a charge of minus one. And um, if you're interested in knowing the name of this molecule, this is called acetonitrile N oxide. Uh, that nomenclature is, is not important at, the, at, this, at this time. So that's how to calculate the formal charge of this molecule.